In this series of videos, we'll discuss the physiological pathway of stress, as well as its effects on our bodies. We'll focus on how stress can affect IBD, or irritable bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. 1.4 million Americans are affected by IBD, and there is no cure. Stress is an inevitable part of life. But if it persists, our body's immune system and other important pathways are impaired. Stress had often been viewed and dismissed as a subjective concept in science, but a ton of recent studies have warranted scientists to look deeper into the psychological contributions of stress on the body. So in this video, we'll take a look at the physiological mechanism of stress. What exactly is happening in our bodies when we have a week of final semester exams coming up? or find out a loved one is sick and in the hospital, or are having flashbacks of a painful memory. Life is maintained through homeostasis, or balance, just like a seesaw. This, this equilibrium is constantly challenged through internal and external adverse forces, which we call stressors. So when a stressor enters our life, the first part of our body to register it is the master gland hypothalamus located in our brain. The hypothalamus will release CRF, or corticotropin releasing factor, which will then travel down to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary gets the message and re releases ACTH, or adrenocorticotropin hormone, into the bloodstream. Now ACTH also travels down to the adrenal glands, which sit right on top of our kidneys. It also triggers the release of three types of hormones. But the most important hormone that we're going to look at in the stress pathway is the secretion of glucocorticoids, or cortisol, from the adrenal cortex. This entire system is called the HPA axis, which stands for hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal communication. The release of CRF determines the diurnal release of cortisol, which is just the normal change in cortisol levels during the day and night. Certain factors, or in this case what we call our stressors, can elicit an increased CRF secretion. They include hemorrhage, intense exercise, negative emotions, infection, trauma, or pain. Now, prolonged increased cortisol levels can have a catabolic effect or cause the breakdown of many molecules and tissues in our bodies. So what's the difference between acute stress and chronic stress? Well, it's normal to have acute stress in life. It's caused by a changing environment. In some cases, it allows us to focus better and increases our responsiveness to certain tasks we're doing. So if you're walking down the road one day and happen to meet a bear, you have two options. You can either fight the bear if you're feeling bold, or in my personal opinion, you better take flight. In either case, there's going to be a burst release of cortisol into the bloodstream that will provide us with immediate energy needs. Our heart rate will increase and blood vessels will constrict as a mechanism to prepare us to get out of the stressful situation. This is all part of an increased sympathetic nervous system state. Now, if we're constantly bombarded with difficult situations or are running into bears on the road on a weekly basis, chronic stress is going to develop. And this has much more devastating consequences on other pathways in our bodies too. I'm sure you've heard of the terms positive and negative feedback in your studies of homeostasis. Feedback is crucial in helping to regulate and keep different systems in check. Now cortisol in the healthy context is anti-inflammatory and provides negative feedback to the HPA loop in CRF release. But coming back to chronic stress, the neurons that usually perform negative feedback to regulate the HPA access can become damaged leading to constant high cortisol levels in the bloodstream. 
One of the implications of chronic stress is that it affects the brain-gut interaction. Now, this axis is composed of the central nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and the gut. So the central nervous system includes the HPA axis and the CRF hormone system we were just talking about. The autonomic nervous system includes the parasympathetic or vagus nerves and the sympathetic nerves, which are both part of the extrinsic control of the gut. And then there's a third division that's also part of the autonomic nervous system, and this is called the enteric system. It's the gut's own rich intrinsic nerve supply. And lastly, we have the gut, which receives the messages from the other two larger systems. And the gut has immune cells, a wealth of healthy bacteria or flora, and CRF hormone receptors. So it's been suggested in studies that patients with IBD, which is a chronic state, may have an uncoupled sympathetic nervous system in HPA axis. So chronically raised levels of inflammatory cytokines in the blood due to this active IBD could actually blunt the response of the HPA axis to both inflammation and acute stress. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the implications of chronic stress on the GI tract.